The night holds many secrets, and there are some who would go to any length to unravel the mysteries of the unknown. On this rain-drenched evening, will there be answers, or will there be terror at Collinwood? Welcome to Episode 6 of Terror at Collinwood. I am your hostess, Danielle, a.k.a. Penny Dreadful, and I'm gonna dance for you. Gonna dance your cares away. No, I'm not. You don't. You really don't want to see that, believe me. You'll, you'd have a lot more cares than you currently do if I danced for you. Uh, no, nobody wants to see that. Welcome. It is currently June of 2021, and the 55th anniversary of Dark Shadows is coming up on June 27th. How exciting. By the time you're listening to this, the date may have already passed. Uh, If it has, I encourage you to go to terroratcollinwood.com. Check out the blog section because there's a really fun post that's going to be going up on the 27th or if you're listening to this after the 27th, it should be there by now. Uh, June also happens to be Pride Month. And since there are so many LGBTIQ plus fans of Dark Shadows, I thought it would be a great idea to get several fans to submit clips and talk about their love of Dark Shadows. Now, this idea was inspired by an email I received from Dark Shadows fan and writer uh, David Elijah Namod, who is a longtime supporter of our horror host show, Shilling Shockers. He's written uh, about it for Scary Monsters Magazine and Fangoria and other publications and he suggested uh, a topic about the appeal of Dark Shadows to LGBT fans. And I thought that was a great idea. So I thought it over and decided it would be fun to invite many fans to submit clips to the show. Uh, So I've kind of put out invitations to some people I knew and also to a couple of the Facebook groups. And I received some excellent, delightful audio clips that I am going to include in this episode uh, as a celebration of both Dark Shadows' anniversary and also Pride Month. So I hope you'll enjoy these clips. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying that Dark Shadows is for everyone. And I think this is uh, a show that actually unifies the fandom. We all love Dark Shadows, right? Uh, But I think Dark Shadows especially resonates with a lot of um, LGBT plus fans because uh, you, what you'll hear it in the clips, some of those reasons, but I think uh, this is going to be a really fun episode and uh, I encourage you to check it out. Sit back and relax and listen and uh, it's a really fun episode and I, I really hope that everyone will give this uh, give this a whirl here. So uh, enjoy. I'll also preface this by saying that some people do use the C word in, in this episode and I am talking about camp. Um, and campy, uh, which Dark Shadows isn't, but we'll, we'll save that discussion for another episode. <laughs> Dark Shadows is not campy, but that's okay. Our first clip comes from Peter Mac. Now, I first saw Peter Mac as Sophia in the Golden Girls Live stage show in Boston. The show, which also features Peter's husband, John, as Dorothy, was absolutely delightful and hilarious. It was hysterically funny. My sisters and I still talk about how great that show was. There were even Dark Shadows references in the show. So if you ever get the opportunity to see Golden Girls live and you're a Dark Shadows fan, you will catch the references to Dark Shadows and the show was hilarious. Peter is a gifted performer and a critically acclaimed tribute artist who won a Golden Halo Award for his portrayal of Judy Garland. You can find out more at the Judy Garland show all one word dot com the Judy Garland show dot com you can also check out Peter's YouTube interview show Mac and chat uh, during the pandemic he interviewed his friend Lara Parker as well as Marie Wallace so there are some great interviews on the channel so I encourage you to check it out hi my name is Peter Mac not Victoria Winters <laughs> kind of appropriate I think to start that way for this particular podcast. And thank you so much, uh, Penny, for asking me to be a part of this. What does Dark Shadows mean to me as being part of the LGBTQ community? Well, first of all, um, I'm a second generation fan. My godmother was one of those kids who actually ran home from school to watch the show. And the bottom line was I was just a strange little kid. (laughs) That's that pretty much sums it up. So when 
she heard NBC was going to start rerunning the show in the early 80s, which is 82 or 83. She made sure that my grandmother had me watch it. I'll never forget that first day watching it and seeing the hand come out of the coffin and grab Willie by the neck with the onyx ring. I was just transfixed by that. So that's my first memory. And then we moved to Long Island. It was on New Jersey Network. And I believe I started tuning in then when Sarah was around and trying to help David and when when Barnabas was terrorizing Julia and those wonderful Julia Home Alone episodes, the blood oozing out of the mausoleum wall. Again, I was just totally transfixed by that. And by Grayson. I became an instant Grayson fan. Um, I just thought she was delicious and wonderful. I suppose, I think even at a young age, I really did identify with Barnabas. I thought, well, first of all, I thought he was cool. But definitely when I was 12 and started getting the MPI home videotapes and watching the full show, uh, Full Throttle, that's that's when it really started to, I started to connect with it, with Barnabas, this man with a secret. This was something Jonathan Frid talked about, that he played him as a man, like, I mean, I'm quoting Jonathan now from an MPI home video interview. I, I played him, he said, as a man who has something perhaps in his private life that he has to hide, that the public can't know about. And I was questioning my own sexuality at that point, wondering who and what I was and having a very hard time in school. So there was something in the performance that resonated with me. And certainly, again, the fact that he had a secret that if people knew what it was, he he could be in great danger, possibly even be killed. So that that certainly resonated with me. I have to say definitely the eye candy on the show. <laughs> I would be... You know, I was in awe of of Catherine as Josette, and I think I even had a little crush on her. I know I did, and and Laura as Angelique. But you know, Laura wrote that she she went into this business because she wanted to be a princess and wear pretty dresses. And when we first met, I said, when I read that, I was like, me too. <laughs> so that was part of it. But the eye candy, I'm talking about Mitch Ryan and Joel Crothers. And, you know, that definitely I I had a serious crush on on Joel Crothers and certainly David Selby. Um, So so that was part of it. Also, the unrequited love thing with with Julia and Barnabas, that resonated with me. And I think a lot of well, first of all, I would say as a gay man, because I actually as I've gotten older, I identify as bisexual because in my 20s, I realized that, you know, things are not just one way. And uh, I'm actually what would be known as a Kinsey four, predominantly homosexual, but more than incidentally heterosexual. Even though I am married to a man and have been for 19 years, and he knows and is totally cool with that. But um, but I, I certainly have had girlfriends in my life who probably wanted more than I could give them. And, and that same way that Julia wanted Barnabas. You you can relate to that. I, I definitely have been able to, to relate to that. Also, I think the cool thing about Dark Shadows is that the weird people, Barnabas and Angelique and Quentin and Adam, they're the cool kids. It's the people around them that are the mundane humdrum, you know, the everyday people, you know, Roger and Elizabeth, nothing against Joan Bennett, because that was also definitely a selling point for me, loving old movie stars, the beauty and the glamour of of um, of Joan Bennett. And and again, you know, Grayson having this, you know, I, I do Grayson in my act, you know, along with the other 50 or 60 ladies that I impersonate in my cadre of ladies. I mean, she's in there with Judy Garland, so she's not in bad company. <laughs> but, um, you know, there are a lot of female impersonators who uh, who I know for a fact love Grayson Hall because she had that thing about her that that people like she was a diva. There's no doubt about it. Grayson was a diva and we love a diva. So that's that's part of it. There's just so many aspects of it. I mean, we could go on and on. But as far as pride goes and it's so wonderful, Penny, that you're doing this. 
I think that for anyone out there, it doesn't matter whether you're gay or, or lesbian or bisexual or trans or, you know, whatever. Any of you who feels like the outcast, you know, you know you're, you're the cool one. Celebrate your weirdness. You know, that you're this weird, wonderful person. We should all be celebrating our our oddness and our queerness because it's the queer people on Dark Shadows that are the fascinating ones. Those are the ones we love the best. So at Pride Time and with Dark Shadows concerned, I would say, don't come out of the don't come out of the closet. Come out of the coffin. <laughs> you know? Come come out of come out of the dark shadows and be the weird, wonderful person you are. Just like all those people we love on DS. Thanks for asking me to do this, Penny. I appreciate it. That was absolutely amazing. I loved that clip so much. Thank you, Peter, uh, for sending that in. I appreciate it. All right. Our next clip comes from John Dimes. My friend and fellow horror host, John Dimes, is an absolutely brilliant, wonderful, and amazingly talented actor, singer, author, comedian, and artist. His alter ego, the hilarious and delightful Dr. Sarcophagi, who hosted The Spooky Movie for many years, in addition to co-hosting The Spooky Movie Film Festival with Count Gore Duvall, is just a joy. Uh, anytime you are in the presence of John Dimes, you will have no choice but to have a wonderful time, and I miss him so much. Um, John has written such books as The Rights of Pretending Trump tribe and there are no bad movies only bad audiences great title john uh currently uh john produces a, a wonderful series of cartoon shorts under the title sarcophagi for show in 2017 he was inducted into the horror host hall of fame you can find out more at www.facebook.com slash dr sarcophagi all one word the question is um why does Dark Shadows maintain such an enduring following in the LGBTQ community? <laughs> it, you see what I just did there? I, I added the BBQ to emphasize that I'm black and beautifully queer. Okay. But that's not the point. <laughs> the point is, why do we love this show so much? On a surface, it's, it, it's about the acting that owes itself to the films of the 30s and the 40s to those delightfully affected exchanges between William Powell and Myrna Loy, and to those strong, sometimes tragically crazed female leads a la Betty Davis and Joan Crawford. Melodrama. We dig the melodrama, the art of high camp archness. Lewis Edmond could knock objects from the mantelpiece with the sheer power of prissiness. Grayson Hall channeled Agnes Moorhead's Endora, but her spells were simple wiles and cunning. Laura Parker could light cigarettes with her incandescent, wide-eyed glare. And Jonathan Fred as Barnabas? Mm, his elegant tragedy and wanton rage like the Great Wall of China could be seen from space. <laughs> like I said, though, that's the surface of why we love the show so much. Beneath all that, Barnabas was the very essence of what it's like to be gay. I'm sure I'm not the first person to identify with Barnabas and his angst of keeping a terrible secret about himself from his family and everyone. If that secret ever got out, like him, we've all seen how others like ourselves are cruelly mistreated, right? The stakes pun intended, <laughs> have, have often been terribly real, my friends. So, in an act of equal parts self-preservation and self-loathing, one routinely resolved to keep all these inclinations bottled up, locking oneself away in a coffin or a closet. And it's all the same, really. And the similarities don't end just there. Remember when, our, when, when Barnabas participated in a cure for his malady? Damn near killed him as it aged him, didn't it? That whole incident was a cautionary tale. Deny who you are for the sake of being normal or for, for, for someone else's sake, you'll die, damn it. The title of the show, Dark Shadows, 
is almost existential. It's not always necessarily about the hidden dangers lurking in the dark, in the literal dark, but the hidden dangers lurking in the shadows of one's own mind and the harm we can potentially cause ourselves. Wow. I'm so goddamn deep, aren't I? That was so awesome. Thank you so much, John. I love hearing your voice. Thank you so much, and I miss you, and I really appreciate you sending this in. Thank you. Our next clip comes from Bobby Lugosi. Now, Bobby Lugosi is the host of the wonderful and informative YouTube series, Dusty Old Movies. It's a really fun and enjoyable review series that covers not only all of the Dark Shadows storylines, like all of them, but also the 91 Revival series is covered. Uh, all of the Dark Shadows films are covered as well. And he also talks about classic horror films, classic monsters, classic comedies, and classic films and television shows. Shows. Bobby is an enthusiastic and knowledgeable host, and along with his critiques, he gets into the history and has this really fun way of recreating famous lines or scenes in the spirit of the film or show being reviewed. Like, he'll put on the costume and he'll just do this really creative, like, reenactment of certain key scenes in uh, the movie or show, and it's just great. Uh, so, Thank you so much, Bobby. I'm gay and I have high functioning autism. So growing up, I felt extremely different. Before I started watching Dark Shadows, I was already into the classic Universal Monster movies. I don't know if I realized it then, but looking back, I did relate to those characters because they were different and misunderstood. And when I first heard about Dark Shadows, to me it sounded like a soap opera version of the Universal Monsters. So I asked my mom, who grew up watching Dark Shadows, for volume one of the DVDs for my birthday. Dark Shadows turned out to be the most unique show I'd ever seen in my whole life. It had monsters and humans who struggled with being different. And it had characters who relished in being different, like Nicholas Blair and Dr. Julia Hoffman. But it also had its own way of storytelling, its own acting style with actors playing different roles, and it was live on tape, so the actors would make mistakes and keep going. It was one of a kind. And I learned from watching the DVD interviews, that's why people loved it. And for the first time in my whole life, it felt like being one of a kind was a wonderful thing. Because it is a soap opera, there are tons of episodes. I felt like I got to know the characters personally. And that it was a private world that I could escape to that always made me feel good. It gave me something I could relate to, escape to, and I would always walk away feeling confident. Bobby, that was wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. I really, really appreciate you submitting that clip. Thank you. Our next clip comes from David Elijah Namod. Now, David is a Rondo Award-winning writer whose work has appeared in many publications, including Scary Monsters Magazine, Famous Monsters of Filmland, Fangoria, The Bay Area Reporter, Videoscope, South Florida Gay News, and many more. He won the 2012 Rondo Award for Best Reviewer, for which he was nominated for the Dark Shadows-themed article, Ladies of the Shadows, in Famous Monsters of Filmland number 261. David has a regular ongoing horror column entitled Bay of the Living Dead at the Broke Ass Stewart website. In the late 90s, he wrote and directed the independent film Next Year in Jerusalem, which was released on home video and features Dark Shadows' own Louis Edmonds. What does Dark Shadows mean to me as a gay man? Well, when I was watching the show in first run from ages 11 to 15, I was bullied a lot. Everybody in the neighborhood knew that I was gay before I did, and I was the neighborhood punching bag. And I'm sad to say that my own father took part in the bullying. And Dark Shadows was set in this uh, strange, bizarre, never-never land. And at the time I was being bullied, Dark Shadows was my escape. It was so far removed from my reality, so far removed from reality, period. Uh, it gave me a good escape from the horrors of being a bullied gay kid. And years later, watching it as an adult, I came to re recognize the gay subtext between Barnabas and Willie 
And I also came to recognize a couple of characters who were gay. Professor Stokes, Parallel Time Roger Collins, Mr. Best, the death uh, character. I recognized them all as gay men. And when he was in his late 60s, Louis Edmonds, who played Roger, came out. And I was delighted. I knew and I, and I came to realize that many of the cast members were gay. And I realized that when I watched the show, I was looking at brothers. And um, more recently, I read In the Shadow of the Bridge, the memoir by Dark Shadows writer Joe Caldwell, who wrote that when he and Ron Sprout created the character of Barnabas Collins, they created the character as a metaphor, a closeted vampire. They created the character as a metaphor for their own lives as closeted gay men at that time. And wow, Dark Shadows just speaks to me on so many levels as a gay man. And I just love it. I always have and I always will. But now that I'm aware of all the gay cast members and the gay subtext and three gay characters, it's just there's nothing like Dark Shadows and I will always love it and it will always be my escape. Thank you so much for submitting that, David, and for sharing that. That was great. And thank you for suggesting the topic that inspired this episode. Now, our next clip comes from my good friend, John Faust, who is a fellow monster kid and horror host. John Faust is an actor and professional voiceover artist who's best known to horror fans as Danvers, horror host of Demented Features. John is wonderful, delightful, and very talented, and he's always the life of the party. He's a joy to be around. I see him uh, every year at PowerCon out in Anaheim, and unfortunately, I'm probably not going to make it this year, but uh, I miss you, John. Uh, among many other things, he produced a documentary called Playtime Mass created a Varney the Vampire video series, adapted a stage play based on Night of the Living Dead, and as you'll hear in his clip, did something that was perhaps a little closer to Maine. You can find out more about him at faustvo.com, F-A-U-S-T-V-O.com. Happy Pride Month, everybody. My name is John Faust. I'm a voiceover actor and uh, stage actor. And to say Dark Shadows influenced me is quite an understatement. Um, I remember uh, I saw Dark Shadows in its second inception uh, when it was uh, being re-aired back in the 80s. And I remember very distinctly I grew up um, partially in Memphis, Tennessee. Local horror host Savad would come on in the afternoons and advertise that Dark Shadows was returning in one week, in six days, in five days, etc., etc. Well, of course, I was excited beyond belief. I didn't know what Dark Shadows was yet. I was, I don't know, five, six, seven, probably about five, but I was probably seven, eight years old. I loved monsters. And through clips of what they aired on uh, the television commercials, of course, I started to realize Dark Shadows was about vampires and werewolves and ghosts and the supernatural. So I could not wait for this to come on. Being a uh, 70s and 80s kid, of course, I grew up with monsters just being front and center. So I loved vampires and I loved Dracula. And so there was this new vampire, Barnabas Collins. And oh my God, what is that all about? So... I would run home after school and watch Dark Shadows. And for a kid, you know, some of those storylines got a little convoluted for my, uh, for my mind because, you know, you want vampires in action constantly. And I got it for the most part. But um, campy masterpiece Dark Shadows was. Um, and when I finally came out and started revisiting some of these episodes... Of course, you find out that Lewis Edmond had come out when he was in his 70s uh, in his uh, biography. I always loved Lewis Edmond and his portrayal of uh, Roger Collins. He had this presence, this very theatrical presence uh, behind him. I mean, everybody on that show did, but he just connected with me in such a way uh, that I didn't quite understand what it was until I had... Uh, come out as a gay man myself later on and kind of realized that there was sort of a, an understated spoken language there, whether it was intentional or not. 
Um, but the theatricality of it and the 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 set design and all of these things just I thought were wonderful. Uh, it was like I especially remember when they came into color and they had like the blue candles. I mean, of all things to have like on your set, they had these blue candles and I'll never forget that. And I just for some reason thought that was like a trope of horror now, but it was probably just to show off, hey, we're in color. But, um, you know, I loved uh, all the Hammer horror films and, you know, that time period uh, in which a lot of them took place in the, in the 19th century. And, of course, Dark Shadows would go back and forth in time to the 18th century and the 19th century. And I just I thought it was spectacular. And then kind of growing up a little bit more and, and becoming an actor myself, um, I uh, decided down the line to become a horror host. This was, oh, God, 15 years ago now. Um, and so I invented Demented Features, which is still up and running, DementedFeatures.com. But to, to, <laughs> I brought over so much from Dark Shadows into and what Demented Features is actually still to become um, that uh, I, you know, I, it has influenced me beyond belief. Um, so much so that about, oh, this has been 10, 12 years ago now, I created a very short-lived Dark Shadows, the web series. Some of you may remember this because it kind of had a following out of nowhere, at least for me. And we did, I don't know, half a dozen episodes. We unfortunately kind of had to shut it down because, uh, of copyright issues, but we were just kind of doing stuff for fun anyway. But we would take um, we would take episodes and kind of condense them down to ten minutes long, and we would release them once a week. Uh, and we started uh, just before um, Barnabas Collins came into being. Um, so we explored, you know, the Willie Loomis episodes and you know all of that stuff, and we had so much fun with it. Uh, we did a lot of it on green screen, and I would take photos of all these old houses, old dilapidated 18th century houses in Charleston, South Carolina, and I would, you know, put them as the background in our green screens. And, you know, it was very amateurish for what we did at the time, and I, I've grown a lot since then. But it taught me a lot about filmmaking um, and, you know, how to use that kind of stuff when we did it. And, of course, my partner... Um, actually played Roger Collins. Um, I directed for the most part, and, you know, I was going to play Barnabas Collins. And we were one episode away from introducing Barnabas before we had to cut it down. So, oh, well. But, um, you know, all of uh, my friends, my theater friends were involved in this, and uh um, you know, it was we really embraced that inclusiveness about it. You know, when I am directing or when I am, um, oh, God, when I'm voice acting, especially, I will draw on some of these characters and I may manipulate them and, and turn them into something else. But they are very inspired from um from these wild characters in Dark Shadows or uh, Hammer Horror or even Universal Horror or whoever. Um, but I love knowing that, you know, as a, um, as a gay person, that there were all these other gay men and women and um, transgender people out there um, throughout history that have inspired me, and I love having that energy inside of me that was pulled from something that I love so much. So um, that's kind of my Dark shadow story and how it influences me even to this day. So um, I hope you guys have a great Pride Month and a Pride Life, and feel free to look me up. I'm at Faust, F-A-U-S-T. Yes, that's my real name, Faust. VO.com. That was awesome, John. Thank you so much. Dark Shadows is not campy. Um, anyway, 
That was great, John. Thank you so much for submitting that delightful clip. I really appreciate it. Now I'm going back in here to do some re-editing because I received one more clip from the delightful and charming Julie M. Grizzle. Now, Julie's a dedicated and passionate Dark Shadows fan who's an active participant in the online fandom. Speaking of active, she loves horses, dogs, and cats, and enjoys playing cowgirl in mounted shooting events. Julie's very passionate about the sport and especially the great people involved. Uh, while she was living in Marlin, Washington, Julie was on the city council and the volunteer fire department. She also worked with the Iditarod Trail Committee for 12 years during her time in Alaska. Julie loves to get out and take chances. For example, she's raced cars and motorcycles, gone skydiving, mushed dog teams, flown planes, uh, and she retired from Alaska Airlines in November of 2012 with 32.7 years of service. Wow, just reading Julie's bio here makes me want to be more a more active person. Like seriously, like she has done so many cool things. And here she is. I hope you can get the audio from this without showing my lovely face since I just came in for mowing. But anyway, uh, as promised, and I apologize for it being late, I wanted to send this to you so that uh, if you can include it, that'd be great. If not, so be it. But anyway, um, being a member of the gay community myself, I've been a huge fan of Dark Shadows ever since the mid-60s when it first started. Had a thing for vampires then, still do. Jonathan Frid is the one and only Barnabas Collins. He always will be. Uh, God rest his soul. He was just an excellent actor, expressions, the whole thing. Um, for me, it was a, a place to escape. Um, the neighbors and I, we always used to play Dark Shadows after school. We'd run home to watch it, and uh, we would occasionally play that, and it was a lot of fun. But anyway, um, there was just something about it. It was a deep, dark, spooky place that I could go hide mentally, and uh, to this day, it's the same thing. Um, I love the show, always have. I have all the... I have the coffin set. I have all of the episodes. Watched it uh, completely through the series 14 times since I got my coffin set. Um, it takes me back to a happy place. Um, I feel like I'm among friends. Uh, just the last few years, I've been able to attend a few um, small functions and meet a few people, uh, stars from the show. But um, it's just something that brings back my childhood. It's a fun place. Um if you look back on the special effects and everything, it's poor by today's standards, but at the time it was big stuff. And I remember, because I'm a child of the 50s, so in the 60s, man, that was pretty pretty cool. And I loved every bit of it, and I still do. And along with all the little goofs and boo-boos and bloopers, it's great stuff. And uh, I'm just infatuated with it. Um, Dark Shadows has been a big part of my life for a long time, and it will continue to be. And I'm a little bit crazy when it comes to collecting things, all things Dark Shadows. I like to uh, cosplay when I go to events. I've got five different um, costumes that I've worked on. But I've met a great community here online on Facebook. There's so many different Dark Shadows uh pages and sites and so on. Met a lot of friends, some that I have met in person at these uh, uh, gatherings, some that I probably will never meet. But it's just fabulous. I enjoy it. There's something about Dark Shadows that just you either get it or you don't. And I got it. And I love it. And knowing that a lot of the um, actors on the show were gay is fine with me. Um, you know, I would never have guessed but I'm not good at picking out people anyway, so it doesn't matter. But it's just the fact that it was just a, a good show, entertaining, suspenseful, excellent acting, um, a, a way beyond its time, you know, ahead of its time. And it was uh, something that will live forever in those that love Dark Shadows. And now, not just my generation, but two, three generations beyond now are still enjoying it. So that has a lot to uh, to say for the show and the creative uh, forces behind it. So love Dark Shadows, love the actors, love everything it represents, and I'll be a fan until the day that I die and go 
uh, meet all the actors up in heaven. I hope that works for you. Please feel free to uh, use it if you wish. I hope you don't use my face because I just came in for mowing the yard. But um, anyway, if you can use part of this, please let me know if you want me to change it. I'll be happy to. Thank you so much. Bye. Julie, thank you so much for that heartfelt clip. I really appreciate it, and I'm so glad I was able to get this clip into this episode. I had actually already edited this episode, but I've gone back in to put this in because it's so good, and I really wanted to include it, so thank you very much. And even though I I don't have any more clips, I'm going to add my own feelings and thoughts here as well. Dark Shadows, as I said in the first episode and in subsequent episodes, means a lot to me, and it really resonated with me growing up when I was a child. And at the time, it didn't really occur to me. But upon reflection, I think there is a connection. Uh, I spoke in the first episode about otherness and feeling other. And I, I always felt that way growing up. I'm a trans woman, and I fully transitioned over 20 years ago. So yeah, that's my my little secret, I guess. And now you know it. And now that you know it, you must die. No, sorry. I'm t- <laughs> I learned it from watching TV. Um, And my husband, uh, my late husband, uh, was a trans man. So he transitioned going in the opposite direction, female to male. We honked and waved as we passed each other. Anyway, uh, thinking back to those times and watching Dark Shadows, I really connected with it. It, Dark Shadows was such an escape and continues to be an escape from the real world. It's like Jonathan Frid said, it was a dark brigadoon, right? Or like Dan Curtis said, it had a very magical quality to it. It was like a dark fantasy, but you felt part of it. And I think a big part of that was that feeling of otherness that I talked about in episode one and feeling other. And that's what the lead characters in Dark Shadows were. Those were the characters whose stories we were following and captivated by. We followed their struggles. But I think there was also that layer for me of the curse, of being cursed. And there were a lot of people on Dark Shadows under curses against their wills and being put upon and long Longing to escape a curse, right? And being a trans kid, being someone who knew she was a girl, but started going through male puberty, that felt like a curse to me. That was horrible. And not being able to tell anyone, right? And it, it had to be a secret. And a lot of people mentioned here that the secret, keeping the secret, that was very much a thing too. I couldn't tell anyone that. How could I possibly explain that to, to someone? That There was that component, but also on Dark Shadows, there was magic. Magic was part of Dark Shadows and characters like Angelique, for example, could affect change through the use of magic. And that that resonated with me as well. Like I wished that I could affect change. I wish I had the power to do something. So uh, there were multiple things going on there. In addition to it being an escape, there was all of that going on. So thinking back, it was a lifetime ago that I transitioned. It's been so long now at this point and going through transition, I think, because especially at the time you were encouraged to, once you get through transition, that's it. You, You move on from that. The whole point of the transition was to get from point A to point B, but it is part of my experience. And it's certainly tied into that time watching Dark Shadows too. Uh, So maybe there is something to it. Or maybe it's just because Dark Shadows is the most awesome show ever. Of course it is. Anyway, thank you so much to everybody who submitted clips. I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you, Peter, John, Bobby, David, John, and Julie. I really appreciate you sending clips. And a special shout out to David Cooper, who suggested that I get in touch with Julie and also that I get in touch with Bobby. I knew of Bobby through his uh, dusty old movies, which you should check out. If you're watching the YouTube version of this, I am putting some links in the description to people's projects. So check that out. And until next time, happy pride and happy 55th anniversary. Dark Shadows, here's to another 55 years. <laughs>